you put this big old thing down. My goodness, so you got the big calabash. This is the biggest calabash in the whole world. The one that I painted for the you. The one that you, this is you. Yes, that's what this I This is your, yeah. <laughs> thing yes. around the world. That's what I was thinking of. A, look, of a, look at this. Unusual globe like effect. Yes. Uh, the thing that's beautiful about it though is it's so, mm -hmm. it's so well balanced. It's sort of Ghana colors. Yeah. Yeah, that is very alluring then. Yeah. Well balanced. I heard that. Yeah. Very good. All okay, right. let me put this down. Yes, oh yes, we have a meeting tonight. And that's right, that's okay. right. Chapter 17. Chapter 17, and I'm going to get right at it. Of the Snake 2020. Of the Snake 2020. Oh, wow. wow. you got all the information. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know if you put me on or put me no, on. No, I'm a kid that loves being read to. It is a good story. <laughs> really? Yes. I like that. I okay, like yeah. It. Yeah, I mean, hmm. that's like good bedtime story, good well, evening story. you know story. what? I'm yeah. one of those writers who never thinks that something is absolutely manifestly great just because I wrote it. And it takes me a long time to come to the conclusion that it's well, I, good. Well, I do let you know when I don't like something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But well, I do like Okay. This. Well, we'll leave it right at this point now. <laughs> All uh, right. Mm -hmm. Kojo is returning to the city of Los Angeles. And he is going to... Uh, let me see the book again. Oh, okay. The book. All right, the book. There we go. The Snake 2020. The Snake 2020. Okay. And he's going to be uh, hooking up with his lady, Okuzawa, All right. who was formerly known as Cynthia, because right. she got her Afrocentric name together. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, uh, they have to figure out what they're going to do with each other. Uh, several people who are familiar with the book said things like, well, you know, wait a minute, the guy is just leaving Africa and there's this other relationship, there's this other woman, so isn't that a bit polygamous or something? No, it's 25. No. <laughs> yeah, no. that's the point, that's the point. So, you know. Uh, and they've been in a relationship with... Uh, Kuzawa for two years. For two years. And absence does make the heart grow fonder, they say. So he's been absent a bit uh, in Ghana. A month or so. Yes. And he has a mission. He has to get married. So why not get married to the woman you've been with for two That's years? That's right. Uh, one has to keep in mind that one of the prerequisites for his contractual agreement with Asielfo mm -hmm. in order to get what he thinks he wants is to do what the contract calls for, which is to get married uh, within three months, mm -hmm. uh, four months. Or three months. Three, three months. months. Three yes, months. Three months. And uh, Akuza looks like the, she looks like the candidate. Mm -hmm. Chapter 17 mm -hmm. of this book. Mm -hmm. After two years, they had evolved into something that could almost be called comfortable. She knew a lot about him, his work, his dreams, and he was in tune with where she was coming from. She had spent a number of weekends in his apartment in Los Feliz, and he had spent a few weekends in her Echo Park house. From time to time, under the spell of a full moon, mm -hmm. or after a good Italian pasta and a few glasses of red wine, they would become more passionate than usual. But what did that mean? Mm -hmm. He came up on her blind side thinking she's a fine sister, she's my girlfriend, but am I in love with her? Good evening, that calls. Oh, called you. I thought I'd missed you. They embraced, held on to each other for a few hot minutes. Come on, let's get away from this crazy place. Getting away from the Los Angeles airport was always a trip. He thought about the number of times he had picked someone up and spooned back into the circuit. Ooh, how many times have you done that? Yes. On your certainly. way out, you get caught and have to go back around. Mm, yes, yes, yes. You have to be positive of where you're going when you pick someone up from LAX. 
Kojo watched Kuzwa's handling of the traffic. She's heading toward my place. Okay, let's get ready for that. Well, she tripped him out with a tape of Master Mariah's. Birimbao, birimbao. S-O-L, S-O-L, birimbao. S-O-L, S-O-L, birimbao. Akuz, thank us. A nice sound to come back to. I thought you'd enjoy it. Mm. She drove fast and skillfully, thrusting herself into quicker closing spaces. The San Diego freeway entered Santa Monica to the Hollywood, off at Vermont. The familiar seemed unfamiliar. Kojo, guess what? Slow down for the exit. Lights twinkling everywhere. What? I've just sold a book. Remember the, the monster I've been working on for the past year? <laughs> How could I forget it? Well, I sold it to Cosmic Muffin Publishing House. Wow. Mm -hmm. Got a decent advance for it. Mm -hmm. They promised to give me the TV show interview, the prestigious news book review, the whole banana. That's great, of course. Really great. It'll be a treat to read about something serious for change. How many is that? Am I fourth? It looks like I'll go with Cosmic Muffin. Mm -hmm. They're talking about a three-book contract. I like that. Mm -hmm. In addition, my deal with a sister here makes a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for you, Uncle. I'm really happy for you. He placed his hand on her thigh and kissed her on the cheek. She strokes the side of his face. Mm -hmm. He settled back, enjoying the sensation of being on familiar turf. Los Angeles City College on the left, the Thai restaurant and Jack in the Box on the right. Santa Monica Boulevard, Santa Monica Place, across the small street that bordered Master Young Kil Kim's Taekwondo studio. Had a lot of weird fun in there, no doubt about it. He felt he was photocopying years of sidekicks, hours of stretching and sit-ups. Thank you, Master Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Affectionate glances at him from time to time. Kocha has returned. Kocha has come back to me. Mm -hmm. She didn't feel that it was something she wanted to shout to the world about, but she felt it. As a writer, as a novelist, she felt she could see into the future of their relationship. I've given everything and demanded nothing. I've been his sounding board and, yes, his whipping board when the occasion demanded. I haven't been given the future in a bit because I don't really think you know what to do with a woman like me. <laughs> it's a new ball game now. I think, uh, let's see what the deal is. Kojo was jolted and delighted to discover that he was in the perimeters of his own neighborhood, the car wash, where the Mexican dude made the best cheese tortas in the world, Luigi's, the Italian restaurant with the Belizean woman who managed the place, and the singing waiters who could have been candidates for the Met or La Scala. Mm -hmm. The movie theater where the film, the mm -hmm. real films, the real films, mm -hmm. Goyana Squatsi and stuff like that was shown next to the bookstore, and then the Skylight Theater, mm -hmm. the Hiroshima Cafe next door to the bookstore and the theater, the bigger Italian restaurant across the street that specialized in big pizzas, big. Mm -hmm. The post office across the street. Oh, cool. Let's stop and have a glass of wine. A glass of wine and maybe a bit of tiramisu was always Papa Milano. Mm -hmm. They could never figure out why Papa served these minestrone sized glasses of excellent San Antonio Burgundy. And after the second one, it didn't matter. <laughs> well, how do you feel? Are you glad to be back home or what? <laughs> Coach just stared at her for a speechless moment. Back home, coming back to America, net better than coming back home. It was more like a starting point than anything else. Mm Hard -hmm. to answer that, of course. In a way, I don't feel that I was ever away from here. I think that's the effect you have when you realize you're surrounded by miles and miles of black people. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you know you're somewhere else by the way people do things. Like what? I haven't been to the continent yet. Mm -hmm. Well, like the service we perceived here, the minute we sat down, we may or may not have been served as quickly in our crop. He could tell that his companion story was registering. Proper service be so quick in L.A. and so slow in our crop. But hey, let's put the negatives on the back burner. There's no major league drug problem on the street yet. 
Mm -hmm. Babies are not being oozed to death in their cribs. Extended families will support a drone mm -hmm. for years just because he's a member of the family. People are polite on the whole. The art is what African has always been. Young people do not go around dissing their elders. Mm -hmm. The society is serious. They're having problems getting it together, but they will overcome. I'm confident of that. Papa Milano's was filling up the after theater crowd. Mm -hmm. I think it's time for us to go. He whispered, she whispered to him in a low, sexy voice. Mm -hmm. I think it's time for us to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Forty-six sixteen Rodney Drive, Akusa Park. There's a convenient space two houses away. Beautiful summer night. Crickets chirping. The sound of Armenian music down low. Wow, this is really what I call traveling light. That's the way I like it. Four pieces and a carry-on bag. Mm -hmm. They made their way up his, to his second-floor apartment, feeling loose and tipsy from the wine. Into my lady, home sweet home. Mm -hmm. Kojo liked his apartment, the, the polished floors, the Persian carpets, the small workable fireplace. He had furnished it very carefully over a period of years. Two bedrooms, one for sleeping and dreaming, the other for work study. Books on film, books about screenplays, books of screenplays. Authorities on the media were arranged on wall bookshelves. Akoza was browsed. Kojo dumped his baggage in his study bedroom and returned from the fridge with a half gallon of San Antonio Burgundy and two glasses. You see, Papa Milano ain't the only one with winery connections. <laughs> he flicked the draftsman's light down low, made quick work of choosing Africa Brass, the Coltrane classic, and led a Kuzwa by the hand to his low Danish modern sofa. They sipped their wine, absorbing the music for a few beats. Kojo, have you contacted your folks? No, not yet, but they know I'm here. They used to give me a couple of days to settle back in before they start pulling at me. If my guess is right, I probably have a couple of messages on the machine now. A few wine sips later, Kojo stood and announced with mock seriousness. Of course, I haven't had a shower in a number of hours. Mm -hmm. I would deem it my very great pleasure if you would consent to join me. Mm -hmm. It'll conserve water, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I do know what you mean. <laughs> she went into the bathroom to undress. Kojo left a trail of clothes leading to the shower. Mm -hmm. He turned his back to her, pretending to be asleep. Of all things, why me? <laughs> Kojo, listen to me. I know you're not asleep. Don't be depressed. Hey, this is Akuzawa Ferguson. Remember, formerly Cynthia Ferguson, daughter of Negro-centric parents, etc. You've just flown across the Atlantic Ocean. We've had a little bit too much vino. And there's no doubt in my mind that you have a lot on your mind, plus jet lag. Correct? He nodded, still unwilling to face her. Okay, let's cuddle up here and get a good night's sleep for a change. He turned to face her hesitantly. <laughs> of course, I love you, do you know that? She looked stunned for a second and pleased. You've told me a lot of things, but you never told me that before. I love you too, Kojo. They wrapped their arms around each other and with minutes, within minutes that drifted off into a dreamless sleep. He woke up and stared at the note pinned to the pillow next to him. Dear Kojo, welcome home. I can't tell you how great it is to have someone I can talk with, joke with, make love to again. Oh. Concerning the last mention, it happens to every man at some point in time. That's what my conservative papa once told me. In any case, I don't believe in obligatory love making. We'll talk more about this at a later date. Mm -hmm. Sorry I had to leave early. Plus, you know how it is when you have a day full of appointments plus lunch. Mm -hmm. I'll hook up with you tomorrow about 6. If that ain't cool, call and leave a message on my machine. Love, Akuzawa. Ah. Mm -hmm. Kojo sat up slowly on the side of the bed, gathering his business together. Check the telephone messages, check my facts, start talking to the people I want to be in my company. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. How am I going to handle the Kuzu one? He didn't want to appear to be manipulated. Well, asking her to join my crew will place us on another level anyway. 10 a.m. he brushed his teeth, made a pot of jasmine tea, and sat at his kitchen table feeling powerful, sensitive, able. Yeah, I'm going to put this bad boy together and fly. But first I have to get back on my track. He changed into his workout clothes and started out. What sense does it make if I have a million dollars and a bad heart? Mm -hmm. Come on, Kojo. I told Julia that I heard you come in last night. How was your trip? Frederick and Julia Chan, two of the best department house managers in the city. Mm -hmm. He had the feeling that his back was covered whenever he had to make a trip somewhere. It was stimulating, provocative, interesting, enlightening. All of that, huh? <laughs> and more. I'll talk to you about it later. I'm on my way to do my workout. Okay, okay, okay. I checked the garage yesterday morning to make sure your car was still there. <laughs> <laughs> he waved him on and started his 10-minute walk to Barnsdall Park, walked west for 10 houses and turned up onto Vermont. The Los Feliz Theater, hmm, a Norwegian film. That ought to be interesting. Luigi's across the street. The Thai restaurant next door, the espresso bohemian ancient hippie hangout, the bank and across the street, the shopping mall. This little neck of the woods has damn near everything up the hill to the park. Barnes is our park with the art gallery and the children's art center, the park placed on the hillside like a Roman villa. Mm. A small field that he used for his capoeira exercises, being careful of the dog to the some of the parking dog walking lovers left behind. Mm. Morning Kojo, I haven't seen you, I've been a while. Morning Harry, I can't talk with you now, i got a, a workout to do. I understand. <coughs> I understand. Well, <coughs> all right. Yeah, take it easy Harry. Kojo smiled at his morning park acquaintance, Harry Hessler, with his whiskered wire whiskered schnauzers and a smoking habit that made him cough, <coughs> cough as though he was about to go die any minute. Mm. The others knew him better than to disturb him, or they were so intent on their own thing that they didn't need to disturb him. Harry, the gay couple, liked to stroll in the mornings, arms length. The yoga woman, who was apt to be found in the front lot of the art gallery, with a heel behind her head. Mm -hmm. The bookworm who read as he walked his floppy-eared beagle, the joggers, the old Armenians who assembled on a picnic bench on the olive tree looking dark and solemn, mm. the artists, the man-woman combinations, the man-man combinations, the woman-woman combinations, mm. written rendezvous time, the Tai Chi guys, the beauty of a place that was in the city but seemed to be in a different setting. An hour later, sweating, he made a brisk walk back home, feeling loose and flexible. Shower, shave, and go into my business mode. It's all over for playtime. Playtime. Mm. That beautiful, almost silent film <laughs> by the fantastic French comedian Jacques Tati. Yes. The satirical things he did in that film, the sight gags, the timing, the sense of pace, the diversity of approaches to big familiar happenings. The man was a genius. I wonder if he's dead. I'm sorry, Yvonne. <laughs> you just wouldn't accept it. I know. <laughs> but it's okay. someday, maybe. Yes. The phone was ringing as he entered his apartment. Well, here we go. Good morning, sleepyhead. Oh, Akuzwa, how is it, baby? I'm fine. How about yourself? Well, so far, so good. I just had a heavy workout. Feels like I sweat out for about 10 quarts of toxins. I heard that. I got to run. I just wanted to check with you. Uh, cool about last night. We'll deal with that some other time. Are we on for tomorrow evening? By all means. Good. See you around six. Why don't you come to my place? See you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Got that settled. Get down to business. Dressed in t-shirt and tennis shorts, sipping orange juice. Coach set in his converted bedroom office. Mm -hmm. Computer, word processor, scanner. Fax machine, VCR, DVD, mm -hmm. cell phone on the table, all in the office gadgety he needed surround again. Messages on the machine, predictively mom and dad. 
we know it'll take you a couple of days to get your wind back, so we scheduled a family get together for Friday evening. Hope you had a wonderful trip. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed a lot at the idea of the family get together. Mm -hmm. That meant the uncles, aunts, cousins, granddad, extended, extended family. The other messages were not as joy provoking. Producer secretary, Mr. Dryson would like to contact, would like you to contact him concerning the possibility of doing a script for UT Day International upon your return from Africa. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sheila Butcham here. We carefully studied your treatment and find it intriguing. Upon your return, please call him. I think we might be able to come to some sort of deal over lunch. Charlie Bascom calling, look, Coach, I know this may come to you at the, from one out of the blue, but that's the way it happens. Look, we're very interested here at Bascom Street. Hey, wait a minute. Sorry, I just interrupted that, but just ignorant ass secretary I got. We're very interested here at Bascom Studios in the possibility of you doing a six part series on the jazz graces of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. If we like what you come up with, we can extend the thing into the 90s and beyond. Okay, give me a jingle. <laughs> Hello, my name is John uh, Aldug of the Film Department of Cap uh, Copenhagen University. We are quite interested in doing a show of your 12 documentaries, beginning with the African influence in Polynesia. Mm -hmm. We are prepared, of course, to make the necessary compensation for the exhibition of your works. In addition, if possible, we would like very much to have you present during the series to answer a few questions about the works. We are willing to underwrite your expenses for the trip to Denmark and subsequent uh, accommodations. Mm -hmm. Please contact us as soon as possible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Coach, your time for you to get back to work. No sense. <laughs> running away to Africa thinking you can avoid the inevitable. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got a slot open for you as assistant director for this feature that we're going to be shooting in Brazil starting uh, about September, early October. Beautiful story. Boy and girl get lost in the jungle, raised by Indians, you know, that sort of thing. According to your machine, you'll be back in town by the latter half of June. Let's make contact and do lunch. You got my number here at Paramount, okay, okay? Frank Goldstone here. <laughs> the racist bastard. Mm. Beautiful story. Boy and girl get lost in the jungle, raised by Indians. Mm. Claw Tarzan again. <laughs> The boy and girl are obviously white, and Indians are just background material. They want to play Zaha Tarzan in as many forms as they can manage till the end of time. Mm -mm -mm. Like that horrible thing, Dancing with Wolves. Mm -hmm. The Kevin Costner monstrosity with him as Tarzan on the Western Plains, <laughs> where he becomes more of an advocate for Indian rights than the Indian. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he even found a white woman in the heart of Siouxland to be Jane to his Tarzan. Mm -hmm. And many Indians loved it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. I guess when you've been treated as badly as they've been treated cinematically, anything that doesn't show them being shot down, certainly a wagon train, seems like an advance. Kojo tilted himself back in his chair, propped his feet on his desk, mm -hmm. and sank into deep thought about the substance of the messages. The Danish call was one he could easily give himself over to. All of the others, including the treatment that he had submitted to the Sheila Buttram organization, were going to blur his focus. A script for Dyson? Uh, how it belonged to Dyson to UTD International for at least six months of outlines, treatment, first draft, second draft, third draft. No, I won't touch that. Mm. Sheila Bartram and the company are going to think that I'm playing a little game for more money when I ask to have my treatment pulled out of the running. Baskin Studio, Charlie Baskin. You all I know what that means. <laughs> it would be a fight for artistic integrity from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. It had to deal with Charlie Baskin in the past once concerning a treatment that validated the continued existence of racism in the movie industry. Come on, Kojo, you gotta be kidding. That stuff went out of here in the 60s. No, it didn't. Mm -hmm. No, it didn't. Mm -hmm. And the second time dealt with 
Kojo's insistence that the late genius of the trumpet, Dizzy Gillespie, was not a clown, mm -hmm. had not been a clown. Mm -hmm. Kojo, I don't fucking believe this. You're trying to tell me this guy was more than a fun thing? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you he was one of the most, he, <laughs> man, I'm telling you he was one of the modern masters of what is called jazz, a composer of immense depth and incredible trumpet player. He was a clown, a jokester. Mm -hmm. No, he wasn't. Mm -hmm. So now he calls me to do a six-part series on the jazz greats of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and maybe up to the 90s. I can just see us having fistfights now over the points of view. He would say, Bird was just a common junkie. Diz was a fun thing. Monk was mad. Lester Young was a drunk. Billy Eckstein wasn't a band leader. He was a pimp. But Pa was a schizo. Well, he was a schizo. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Coltrane was blinded by his own outrageous plan. Miles Davis was a warped personality. Billy Holiday was just a hooker. Mm -hmm. oh, I better leave this alone. I don't want to. I don't need the headache. No amount of money is worth it. That was the biggest consideration he had to make, whether the money would be worth his time. None of the gigs promised more than thousands. I need millions, not thousands, millions. Mm -hmm. He laced his hands behind his head and stared out of the window. Just look at this. Here I am being offered deals that a lot of brothers would kill to get. And I'm saying no because I want to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. He did a quick financial inventory. $18 in the bank, savings, 3000 left in the checking account. 1500 on hand left over from the trip. He had to smile at himself for the nickname that a few close friends flew a few close friends had laid on him. Tight wallet. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I'm not a typical 25-year-old. Mm -hmm. I ought to toot as much coke as possible. Well, so you see how many women I can impress. No, my thing is films. That's what I want to spend my money on. 22,500. I can hang tough for a few months. And uh, what the hell am I worried about? My family would never be starved, bottom line. Mm -hmm. But what? But would they be willing to support a man and his wife? No, I would not ask them to do that. And that's where I'm going to start oh. next time. You finished chapter 17? 17 is finished. Oh. And we're going to be, well, let me start on chapter 18. No, no, because I have to do this. <laughs> we have to do it all in one, and then you'll be finished. You, you won't finish it. You just start on it and won't finish it. And now, I know, I know. Okay, so I don't want to be teased like that. Well, I don't want to tease you like that. <laughs> I enjoy the reading. I enjoy uh, how tastefully you put the bedroom scene. That you know that you know one who's an adult can understand what happened, yes, and, yes. and that you know when people are intimate and they care about each other, they have time to just hug and go to sleep. So it's what it's called. Mm -hmm. They always, you know, what I I got something to share with you if I can. Mm -hmm. They always think of adult writing and adult situations as having to do with people having something hot and lustful and, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. all of that going on. Right. I really think that sometimes, as you just put it, sometimes mm -hmm. the more loving thing happens, the more intimate thing happens mm -hmm. when people find themselves uh, being close and becoming closer because of something that didn't happen. Yes, yeah. Something, you know? Yes, understanding. In love. Under mm -hmm. Understanding. Understanding. You know? mm -hmm. I think understanding might be another element of intimacy. Oh, most definitely. Oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, well, I'm glad to hear you say that, especially coming from uh, a knowledgeable, sensitive, intelligent woman. Thank you. Uh, if you were a dummy, I would pay any attention to you. But then we wouldn't be married, so that's... The there you go. <laughs> and vice versa. Moving right on. Moving right on. <laughs> Your book. Okay. This the is, uh, snake 2020. The snake 2020. 
2020. Which is written more in the colloquial as opposed to United Kingdom English. J. Yeah, as the original snake was. There we go. And this is beautiful. And it can be purchased on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore. Just go in and say, I want a book by Odie, O-D-I-E, Hawkins, H-A-W-K-I-N-S. His website is www.odhawkins.com. Gotcha. And he's also on the author's page on Amazon. With that said, we'll have chapter 18. Chapter then. 18, Tomorrow for Sure. Oh, I'm looking forward and to it. If and if chapter 17 engaged you. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Chapter 18, my too. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. See you. See ya. <laughs>